शोरे महीनो सुनकर तुझे तक मैं दवाया शोरे महीनो सुनकर तुझे तक मैं दवाया Today we will complete the summary of Al-Juz Al-Tasir wal the 29th Juz in the Holy Quran. We will begin with Surat Al-Mulk. This is a Makkiya Surah and it consists of 30 verses. Many narrations have been mentioned in the Ahadith al Mubarak of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam that show the greatness and the virtue of this blessed chapter. This chapter is also known as Al-Munjiyya meaning it grants nijat, it saves the people, and it is also known as al waqiah which gives hifazat, it protects and guards the people. And it is also said that the recitation of this blessed chapter, it protects you from the punishments in the grave, it does takhfif, it lessens, it does takhfif of the torments in the grave. So these are the blessings of this chapter, and the blessings that one can receive by just reciting this chapter. In the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how He created life and He created death. He says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أَلَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ وَعْمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ He says that He is the one who created death and life so that He may test you in who does the righteous actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the wisdom behind this life and the wisdom behind His creation of death that this is all a test, it is all a trial to see who amongst his creation, who amongst the arbad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly acts according to Islam and who does evil deeds. This is all a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the next verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains how the seven skies is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a sign towards the qudrat, the control and unlimited power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. And he explains that in any creation, in any takhliq of Allah Almighty, you will not find any defect. You will not find anything wrong in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is perfect. You should look towards it. You should look towards all the signs and the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to see if you find any naqs. Do you find any defect? Do you find any flaw in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This would be enough for you to be guided and be convinced that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has unlimited power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that if you keep looking towards these signs and any creation, your vision will stop working and you will fail to find any defect, you will fail to find any flaw in the creation of Allah Almighty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions the stars and he says that he decorated the skies of the world. He says, وَلَقَدَ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَا صَابِيحَ he says that we decorated the sky of the dunya with the masabih. Masabih, this means lamps. And it, this is referring to the stars that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he fires at the shaitan with these stars. Meaning the light and the fire from the stars shoots towards the shaitan when he tries to put his ears towards the sky and hear the talks and the conversations between the angels. This is the punishment for shaitan, that if he ever tries to listen to the talks of the skies, if he ever tries to listen to the angels talk amongst each other, and he tries to approach towards the skies, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shoots these stars towards the shaitan. In verse 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again indicates towards his power. He mentions how sometimes the birds keep their wings closed, and sometimes they keep their wings open, through which they fly in the air. And he explains that no one can stop these birds except for the Rahman, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that very little people, meaning not many people, are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the 23rd verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هُوَ الَّذِي أَنشَأَكُمْ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبَصَارَ وَالْأَفِدَةِ قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that He is the one who created you. He is the one who gave you life. He gave you the ability to hear, the ability to see. And He created your hearts. He gave you the ability to hear, see, and think. But still, قَلِيلًا ma tashkurun. Still, there are very few people who thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who are grateful upon the bounties and blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them. The next chapter is Surah Al-Qalam. This is also a Makkiyah surah and this chapter consists of 52 verses. 
In the beginning of this chapter, we see another example of how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves His beloved Messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. In the dunya, we see that whenever someone accuses someone of something, for example, if I am accused of something, then I will stand up and I will express myself so that it becomes evident to the people that I am free from that accusation and I will try to prove that the accusation that is being put upon me is false. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removing the accusations which the kuffar, which the disbelievers put on his beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa In the first verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins off by taking the oath upon al-qalam. And the mufassirun mentioned that this is either the pens that are used in the world for religious matters, meaning the pen of the ulama, or this is the pen, the sacred pen with which the taqdeer, whatever is on the lawh mahfuz the sacred tablet was written. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, By the blessings, by the ni'mah of your Lord, you are not a majnoon, you are not a crazy person. This is the accusation of the kuffar, of the mushrikun, that they used to call the beloved messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam a crazy person. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that by the fadl of your Lord, you are not a crazy person. Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and indeed for you, there is ajr, there is reward that never ends. There is countless and endless reward for you. And this reward that you have earned is for the duty which you fulfilled on this land. You invited the people towards the haqq and you made it clear and evident that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you brought the religion of Islam upon the people. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the great character of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He says, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ He says that, O oh beloved, indeed you are an owner of great characteristics. This is the blessed character and the personality of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even praising it. And we find in the narrations of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam where even he says that he was sent as a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was sent by Allah Almighty to complete all of the akhlaq, meaning the akhlaq and the characteristics, the blessed characteristics of the previous anbiya, they were all great, they were all pious, but Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam came on this land to perfect those qualities and to perfect those characteristics. And we also find that Sayyidina Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says herself that the character of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is the Holy Qur'an. From the 8th verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how the disbelievers, the kuffar, they desire that you become more lenient and that you help their religion. And they say that in return they will help your religion. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells His beloved messenger not to do this and not to have any leniency and not to have any kind of mercy upon the kuffar. The Mufassirun mentioned that this can either be Walid ibn Mughira or it can be Aswad ibn Yaghuth. These are the enemies of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. These are the enemies of Islam. And Allah Almighty mentions how these individuals want Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam to leave his religion so that he can support theirs. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some verses in dispraise of these kuffar and he explains, وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَهِينٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his beloved not to listen to those who make many qasam, those who make many oaths, but they are never steadfast upon them. He then says, Man na'il li khayri mu'atadin athim. That they are the ones who prevent and they stop people from going towards righteousness and they transgress in doing sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these verses, He is dispraising and dishonoring the enemies of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, mentioning how, how they prevent people from going towards Islam and they prevent people from following the path of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He mentions how they don't spend, they are very stingy. And one way in which they would prevent and stop the people from going towards Islam is that Walid ibn Mughira, he would say to his family members and his own children that if any of you enter Islam, if any of you enter the folds of Islam, then you will not get any of my wealth. You will not be able to benefit from any of my property or any of my wealth. This was the threat that he would give his family members, his own children, that if they entered Islam, they would be deprived of all of this wealth that I have. This proves that even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows how much he dislikes the enemies of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, to talk bad about those who spread the hatred of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, those who have an enmity toward the beloved Prophet of Allah, then you are allowed to express hatred towards them. You are, you are allowed to express how much you dislike them.
The next chapter of the Holy Quran is Surah Al Haqqa. This is also a Madaniya surah and it consists of 52 verses. In the beginning of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains how the day of Qiyamah, the day of judgments, is the absolute truth. It is Haqq and it cannot be denied. He then goes on to mention how the Thamud, Ad, and the other disbelieving nations, they belied the truth and therefore they deserve the punishment and the destruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the 19th verse of the chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how on the day of Qiyamah, those who are given their book of deeds in their right hand, he says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَ That those who are given their book of deeds in their right hands, they will say, read my book of deeds. They will know that the deeds and their actions in this dunya, they have now paid off. And in return, they are going to be given the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are going to express their happiness. They are going to show their gratefulness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that their deeds and actions were accepted. And now they are going to be given the endless bounties of Jannah. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشَمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ That's those who are given their book of deeds in their left hands. Then they will say, oh, I wish I was never even given this book. I wish I was never handed my book of deeds. Because they know this group of people that gets their book of deeds handed in their left hands. These are the disbelievers. These are those individuals who spent their lives in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And now in return they are being given their book of deeds in their left hand and soon they are to taste the punishments of hell. They are to taste the azab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them in return for their disobedience and in return for their disbelief. It is in these verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the bounties of Jannah for the believers for the pious individuals and for the munkirun, those who deny and reject the truth, there is the azab in the hereafter for them. The next chapter is Surah Al-Ma'arij. This is a Makkiya Surah and it consists of 44 verses. In the beginning of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again mentions the punishment and the azab which is set for the people on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of judgment. And he says that on that day, في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة That each day will be as long as 50,000 years. This is the punishment that will be set for the disbelievers. This is what the disbelievers will feel. But for the believers, for the mu'minun, for the Muslims, there will be peace and there will be, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them tranquility in this time and the time will fly by for the Muslims. He goes on to mention that on that day, the sky will be like melting copper and that the huge mountains that we see on the dunya today, they will become light and they're going to fly around in the air like wool. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will set the day of hashr, the day of resurrection. And he says that the disbelievers, they're going to wish, they're going to have the tamanna, they're going to have the desire that only if they could present their children, their wives, and their family members as a fidya to save them and to grant them relief from this punishment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. He says, Kalla innaha laza. He says, definitely you will not be able to do this. Indeed, it is the boiling and burning fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this azab, this punishment is set for the disbelievers and nothing can relieve them of this punishment. In this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions the qualities of the people of truth. And how for them there is ajr, there is reward in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions that the Holy Quran is not the kalam. It is not the word of any poet or the word of any kahin, meaning a priest. Or like how other people say that this is a kalam created by magic, ma'azallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that this is definitely and indeed the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next chapter is Surah Nuh, which is a Makkiyah Surah. And in this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again mentions a description of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam and how he invited his nation towards the truth, towards the haqq. But every time he would give them the da'wah, every time he would try to preach to them, their disbelief and their corruption would get worse. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he said, Rabbi inni da'utu qawmi laylan wa nahara. He said that, Oh my Lord, indeed I invited my nation towards the truth night and day. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he was given a very long life of 950 years in which he 
would do tabligh, he would preach the religion to his nation, but they would belie him, they would reject the truth. And Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he says that whenever I would invite them and tell them to go to and rush towards the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed Allah loves to forgive, and whenever I would invite them towards the truth, he says, جَعَلُوا أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِهِمْ وَاسْتَغْشَوْ ثِيَابَهُمْ He says that every time I would invite them and call them towards the truth, they would put their fingers in their ears and they would wrap around their own clothing. They would stay arrogant, they would stay ignorant from accepting the invitation of Sayyidina Nuh salam. After Sayyidina Nuh salam lived a long life of doing tabligh and inviting them, inviting his nation towards the truth, but yet the nation still didn't accept him, still didn't obey him and accept the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he finally did dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he punishes them and sends a azab for them. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes them from this land and doesn't leave their name or any of their signs remaining on this earth. That is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the storm to destroy this nation. And Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he made dua for his family members, for the believers who accept him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them and has his mercy upon them. The next chapter is Surah Al-Jinn. This is also a Makkiyah Surah and it consists of 28 verses. In this chapter it is mentioned that the Jinnat, a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, groups from them would go towards the skies and they would listen to the talks and the conversations that are going on in the sky to find out information and, and get more knowledge. But so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blocked their entrance to the skies and the guardians of Jannah in the skies, they would block the Jannat from coming. Rather, fire would be thrown at them. The Jannat, they were concerned and worried as to why their entrance was now blocked. So they roamed around the land. Sayyidina ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, he mentions that a group from the Jannat, they entered Makkah al-Mukarramah in which Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was leading salah for his companions and he was reciting the Holy Qur'an. The Jinnat, they saw this and they listened to the Holy Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Jinnat said after hearing the Holy Qur'an, Inna sami'na Qur'anan ajaba yahdi ila rushdi fa'amanna bihi wa la nushriga bi rabbina ahada. That's when the Jinnat heard this kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They became so inspired by it that they said, we heard the glorious Qur'an, which guides towards the guidance. It is a guide towards the right path. فَآمَنَّا bihi. So we accept it, we believe in it, and we will never do shirk with our Lord. We will never create any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They go on to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no wife, He has no children. They also said that there is a group amongst us, there are some jinnat amongst us who are corrupt and they do not accept the truth. Indeed, there is Jahannam, there is hell for them. They are going to be punished for their disbelief. So this tells us that there are groups amongst the Jannat. Some of them are good, some of them are pious, and they accept the religion of Islam. But some of them, they remain disbelievers, and they remain corrupt, not accepting the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Towards the end of this chapter, there is a beautiful verse which shows and proves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the knowledge of the unseen to his chosen individuals. He says, That he is the knower, he is the alim of the unseen, and he doesn't give this knowledge of the unseen to anyone. Except for the chosen ones, except for the ones who he is pleased with amongst his messengers. This proves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given his messengers, especially his most beloved, and the most exalted messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, he has definitely been given the knowledge of the unseen and along with the other messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next chapter is Surah Al-Muzzammil. This is also a Makkiyah chapter and it consists of 20 verses. In the beginning of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses his beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as Ya ayyuhal muzammil. He says, O oh, the one who is wrapped up in a shawl or in a blanket. This was because Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was resting at the time of this revelation and he was wrapped up in his shawl. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses him as the one who is wrapped up in a shawl. This shows how much love and affection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for every action and every position of his beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah Almighty mentions how the beloved messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam 
who spend his nights in ibadat in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learn in this chapter and we learn in the tafsir that the beloved messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would spend the entire night in ibadat. He would do qiyam al-layl. He would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the entire night and every single night. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا That's do qiyam at night, meaning worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night, except for a little part of the night. This was so that the beloved messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and the blessed companions, they have some portion of the night in which they can rest and in which they can sleep. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam the ikhtiyar, the option to stop at midnight or a little bit before or a little bit after midnight. And then he says, وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ tartila To recite the Holy Qur'an with tartil. And the experts of Tajweed, the experts of the Qiraat of the Holy Qur'an, they say that tartil refers to reciting the letters of the Holy Qur'an properly and to understand the wuquf, the places in which you are supposed to stop and rest while reciting the Holy Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam to recite the Holy Qur'an with tartil, to recite it properly with tajweed and the ma'rifat al recognizing the wuquf. Now we learn in the tafsir that the beloved messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and the beloved companions, they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the entire night because they wouldn't know in which part of the night they are required to stop because the qiyam al-layl or the tahajjud was wajib upon Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So to not miss any of this commandment, to not miss any of what was wajib upon him, he would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the entire night. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does mansukh of that and he says, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنْهُ Then recite and read from the Holy Qur'an what is easier for you. Then this was also mansukh, meaning the command of only worshipping and reading whatever is easy and possible for you. This was also abrogated by the command of the five daily salah which is mandatory upon every Muslim. The next chapter is Surah Al-Muddathir. This is also a Makkiyah chapter and it consists of 56 verses. In this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as Ya ayyuhal muddathir Again, O oh, the one who is wrapped in the shawl or in the blanket. Now, it is evidence from the tafsir and from the narrations that Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam was wrapped in a shawl or in a blanket at this time because this was when he was on the mountains and the angels called out to him saying that Ya Muhammad, innaka Rasulullah That's O oh, Muhammad, indeed you are the messenger of Allah. When Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam heard this and he looked around, he couldn't find anyone. Then when he looked towards the sky, he saw the angel and the angel is the one who called out to him saying that, Ya Muhammad, innaka Rasulullah. So he became worried and a little frightened by this when he ran to his wife Sayyida Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha and asked her to wrap her in the shawl, in the blankets. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed him as, Ya ayyuhal muddathir. He is commanded in this chapter to stand and warn the people of the azab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to chant the takbir of Allah Almighty to keep your clothing pure and to guide them towards the religion of Islam, to announce to them and preach to them the truth. Later on in this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when the people of Jahannam, when the people of hell are asked that why were you given Jahannam, what was the sabab, what was the cause of you being burned in the fire of hell? In response, they will say that we didn't used to perform and establish salah. We didn't feed the poor people. We used to involve ourselves in worthless and pointless actions just to amuse ourselves and have fun in the dunya. And we used to deny and reject the qiyamat such that death reached us. Meaning we died while involving ourselves in such actions and such disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We learn from this, we learn the lesson from this that we shouldn't involve ourselves in these actions which all become a cause of the people being punished in the hereafter and being punished in Jahannam. The next chapter is Surah Al-Qiyamah, which is also a Makkiyah chapter. And in the beginning of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how some people, they doubt the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they doubt the hereafter. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that He is Qadir upon gathering the bones of the people to create them and give them life again in the hereafter. In the 16th verse of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his beloved messenger sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, لَا تُحَرِّقْ بِهِ لِسَانَكَ لِتَعَجَلَ بِهِ It is mentioned in the tafsir that Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, whenever the angel Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi wa sallam would come to him 
and revealed any verse to him, he would begin to say it repetitively before Sayyidina Jibreel salam was even done with the verse. The beloved messenger of Allah would do this so that it is easier for him to memorize the verses of the Holy Quran. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't like this difficulty that the beloved messenger would have to go to and he told him to stop moving your blessed tongue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to him that when the angel is done reciting, then you repeat after him, Inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'anahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not hurry and do not make this difficult upon yourself. Indeed, we take the responsibility of gathering this in your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we will keep this mahfuz in your heart. And he says, thumma inna alayna bayanahu. That's indeed, its explanation is in our responsibility. This shows again how much love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for his beloved that he is telling him not to go through any difficulty, to stay calm, and indeed we will keep this mahfuz, we will keep this kalam protected in your heart, and we will also give you the bayan, we will explain to you, we will teach you the Holy Qur'an. Towards the end of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions yet again death and some situations of the Day of Judgment. The next chapter is Surah Al-Dahr. This is a Madaniya Surah. And in the beginning of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He gives hidayat, He gives guidance to the people as a trial and test to see if they will be grateful or will they turn away from the path and be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty also mentions the infaq fi sabilillah, meaning spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as giving money to the miskin, those who are poor, to the orphans, and to feed those who are needy. That's a, this is a pious and righteous deed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, subha- Allah Almighty then also mentions the bounties and blessings for the people of Jannah. And in the next chapter, Surah Al-Mursalat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again mentions the day of Qiyamah, the day of resurrection, and how on this day, those who rejected the hereafter, those who rejected the afterlife will be given a severe punishment. They're going to be destroyed on this day. And how in the Akhirah, in the hereafter, there is jaza, there is ajar, there is great reward for those of taqwa, those who spent their lives in the dunya, in the righteous path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are going to be given the glad tidings of the endless and countless rewards and bounties in Jannah. This was a brief analysis of the 29th Jews in the Holy Quran. Inshallah, tomorrow we will conclude this course. And we are going to learn the summary of the 30th Juz in the Holy Quran.